together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. My dear brothers and sisters, today I would like us to reflect on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden under the foot by people. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I find this is a beautiful reading in many aspects. The first one, obviously for me, it is an identity that Jesus gives us. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we know what a salt can do. One of the most important things that a salt does is to give taste. But we also know that a salt preserves things. For example, if you are making a biltong, you know you need a salty solution. So I just want to focus on these two aspects. The first one to give taste, to give flavor. And if we see ourselves as the salt of the earth, let's bring this closer home. Let's bring it to our own families, in our own relationships with our parents, with our siblings, with our children, with our friends, with our spouses. Do I always encourage greatness in you? Do I want you to be the best? There are different kinds of people in life. There are those who are forever negative, who always look for mistakes, who always want to pull someone down. No matter how good you have been, no matter how great you are, they will always capitalize on a mistake you have made. A typical example is that you could be seeing this beautiful white wall behind me and notice that there is a black spot and how many people will not see the beautiful white or cream wall behind me, but instead they will focus on this black spot or red spot on the wall. And unfortunately, there are people like that who just see nothing good in the other person. And so the first challenge for me is to live up to this identity, to live up to the person that God has called me to be. To be a salt, to bring flavor, to allow someone to grow, to allow someone to be the best they can ever be, to allow someone to find themselves in the presence of God. That's who I am called to be, and that's who you are called to be. That's the first aspect. But the other aspect of the salt is to preserve life. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. That is John chapter 10 verse 10. That you and I 
are called to live life to the full. Tertullian, one of the greatest church fathers, said, the glory of God is found in a human person fully alive and fully divine. That's the glory of God. I mean, like a normal, healthy parent. When you come home, you want to come home to a house full of children, children full of life. When you come home, you want to meet them full of life, excited, happy, running around. There you know you're at home. Surely you must be worried when you come at home and everything is so silent, it's so quiet, and everybody's going into their own rooms, nobody wants to interact with you, then you must know something is wrong. And so too in our lives. We are supposed to be full of life, beaming with life. That's what we are called to be. Preserve the life that God has given us. Who I am is a gift from God. Who I become is my gift to God. Start appreciating who you are. Start living from the core of your being. Start being the best you can ever be. Allow God to bring the best in you and preserve that which God has given. You know, many people say, I now live what I've prayed for, and that's absolutely beautiful. And I want to do a reflection on this. That you are living a life that you've prayed for, but it doesn't stop there. I must then ask the Lord to give me the grace to multiply that which he has given me and to appreciate that which he continues to nourish me with. That's what we are called to be. Go out. Live life. Allow people to experience the beauty of God in and through you, the third element, you are the light of the world. Light brings out of many things, two things. Light, clarity, and warmth. Let not your name be associated with darkness. Let your name not be associated with confusion. Do not be the cause of dissension among people. Do not be a cause of destruction. Do not be a cause of anyone's malice or downfall. Bring light. Bring hope. Two things that cannot coexist simultaneously. Light and darkness. The light will always overcome darkness. And that's who we are. We are children of light. We are the children of hope. We are the children of the new Easter, the children of new dawn. That's who God has made us to be. Children of light. But light brings hope. Hope gives vision. Vision gives mission. Mission gives direction. Direction forces us to do something. Paul says the love of God urges us. It is the light that becomes the beacon of our hope. But also the light brings warmth comfort, hospitality. That's who we are called to be. Warm people. 
Let people come into our presence and by the time they walk away, let them be enriched by God's mercy. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew. Let your good works be done before people and when they see them, let them give praise to God. That's what we're supposed to do. Just be good and do good. May Almighty God continue to be with us. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to nourish, sustain, and bless us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish you God's blessing as we come alive every day in the presence of our Savior. Amen.